I'm in quarantine along with the other participants here. We've been in quarantine for two months. I'm leading an anti-aging clinical study on lifestyle and behavior modification here at a place called The Villa. It's beautiful. These roses, everywhere you look, all around the property, there are roses and gardens to sit, reflect, and meditate, be close to nature. 60 foot high, 70 foot high magnolia trees, gorgeous oak trees that are 100 years old. So a little bit of paradise. I wanted to share some suggestions for those of you who are in home confinement now because of your concerns, legitimate concerns about the coronavirus. If you've been listening to my radio shows, then you know that I'm deconstructing the myths from the, the story. For example, I believe, and I believe a lot of doctors, I know a lot of doctors and scientists believe that we shouldn't be assuming because someone is asymptomatic, meaning they've had the virus, but they have no sickness, their immune system fought it and destroyed the virus, that normally you could say that's good because now you have antibodies. Those antibodies are then able to acknowledge and attack any time that other virus comes back in the body. Here's the fact. The latest study shows these antibodies may not be protective. There's no science at this moment showing that if you are asymptomatic, you've had the virus, you won't get it again. Yeah, you can get it again. People are getting it again. So now they want those people who are asymptomatic to go back to work. Well, could they spread it to other people? If they're still shedding, yes. I believe that the people who should really be in confined areas, healthy confined areas, are those who are sick. From the very beginning, there was something wrong with them calling it a pandemic, because it was not, it is not. I'm a scientist, I'm a PhD in human nutrition and public health science, but more importantly, for 33 years, senior research fellow at the Institute of Applied Biology and head of the anti-aging medicine department at the Institute of Applied Biology. I did over 144 studies, I've done 44 clinical studies on humans, I've done studies like this, I've published in peer-reviewed literature, so I'm looking at this a little differently than the average person. I'm simply saying, are you saying in Northern Italy, all those deaths, they were all from the coronavirus? Yes. Okay, then we took a closer look. What did we find out? That the people in Northern Italy that had the highest deaths in Italy were in the most single polluted area of all of Europe. Also, they all, every one of them had multiple comorbidities, meaning they had congestive heart failure, emphysema, they had uh, cancer, uh, they had COPD, they were dying. The average age of the person who died from the coronavirus infection was over 80 in a polluted environment. And what do we know? Nine million people each year die in the world from pollution, just air pollution, all right? So, and in the United States, tens of thousands die from air pollution. The most polluted cities have high mortality from that. So you had terrible pollution with people with lung problems and other, other conditions that were killing them. They would have died from those conditions. Now, they had an inadequate, inadequate and inaccurate test. There's no test that's 100% foolproof determining someone has the COVID virus. So they have false positives, meaning you, you're told you have the virus and you don't, or false negatives saying, you're clean, you're good to go. You don't have the virus, but you do. So they don't even have a universal quality test. The tests were done on only 3.3% of the American population for the first month, which means that 99.7% of Americans weren't tested. But on death certificates, they were putting COVID virus, COVID virus, COVID virus on all of them. In fact, we actually played a video of the director of public health, I believe it was in Michigan, stating that if you're in a hospice care, that's the last place you go to die. You're there because you're at the end of your life. You have degenerative diseases, you're out. Cancer, whatever it is, you're gone. And if you die, you die of COVID virus, if you have the virus. The virus had nothing to do with that, probably. The fact that you could have it doesn't mean it's responsible for your death. Those studies have not been done, none of them, anywhere. So I'm concerned that a lot of healthy people who have strong immune systems were, were denied their right to know the truth that as long as they keep themselves healthy, 
they are less opportunity of getting the virus, and if they do, they'll probably be asymptomatic, meaning your body's natural defense mechanism destroys them. All right, so I'm gonna tell you, what, what can you do to help your immune system? Well, sunlight. Now, I'm wearing sunglasses, not because it's cool, it's, I'm all the time being filmed without them, but I'm squinting because the sun's directly in my eyes, 90 degrees. So please forgive me for wearing the sunglasses. It's not because I don't wanna contact eye to eye, I do that every day on my radio television program. But at least I'm not squinting. So sunlight, if you're out in the sun for about 20 minutes, you create somewhere around 10,000 units of vitamin D3 in your body. So I'd like to have sun on my arms, my legs. If I'm not filming, I'm gonna take it off and get it on my chest for about an hour. That's protecting my immune system. I'm taking vitamin C in the form of orange juice, grapefruit juice. I put lemon and lime together in a juice with oranges and grapefruit. I'm eating watermelon, drinking watermelon juice with lemon juice. All that is flooding my body with phytonutrients, vitamins that help build up my immune system. I'm also taking nutrients that I know are good for the upper respiratory tract infection. From the peer-reviewed literature, only the peer-reviewed literature on Club PubMed, for the upper respiratory tract infections, you want vitamin D, vitamin C, astragalus, licorice extract. Those are a few that really make a difference and can help you. Also, I want to eat a healthy plant-based diet. Lots of nuts and seeds, legumes and pulses, fruits and vegetables, starchy vegetables, root vegetables, grains. I want all these in my body. It gives me a lot of fiber, 30 to 50 grams of fiber a day, which I need, everyone needs. I'm gonna take coenzyme Q10 for my heart and my brain. I'm gonna take magnesium for my heart and my brain. I'm gonna take cayenne at about 40,000 heat units for thinning my blood so I don't develop a stroke. And I'm also I'm gonna take vitamin E at 800 units with tocotrienols at 400 to 200, 400 units. That'll protect my heart and my circulation. I'm going to take selenium at 200 micrograms and zinc at about 30 milligrams. Now, all these are in the peer-reviewed scientific literature with thousands of studies showing they help. Now here, because we're doing an anti-aging study, uh, in fact, I have to pull up my pants because <laughs> I've been modified fasting every day. I only eat one meal and I juice all day, 15 juices, so I've lost, I've, That's one of the guests who had the wrong juice just now. Uh, so <laughs> we're juicing a lot. We're flooding our body with chlorophyll, which helps chelate out heavy metals like lead and cadmium and mercury. We are in the sun about eight hours a day. All around you in this beautiful North Texas country, this is the hill country, you have nature. So being around roses, smelling aromatic plants, uh, being meditative, just being mindful in the moment, and suddenly you hear all the birds. Um, exercising, power walking every day. Uh, I believe in exercising aerobically and resistance. Now, for those of you who are homebound, I might suggest, if you can afford it, you can buy a used one for about $500, $700, a Versa Climber, Versa, B-E-R-S-A, Climber. It's a machine, it's a thin machine, about eight foot tall, and you have two handlebars. You can adjust them at different sizes, I like them low because then when you're going up and down with your legs, your body's moving, your whole body's moving. And when you're really moving against resistance, you turn it so it's hard to do, you're getting aerobic and muscle. You're getting resistance. And then you put about two minutes to really hard in, you're getting that peak type of, of uh, energy input. And that helps you. You can put that in your home, it takes up no space. I have one in my apartment in New York. Also, you want to do your sit-ups and your push-ups. And a lot of people are feeling depressed, a lot of uh, spousal abuse, a lot of children's abuse. And that's unfortunate because the most vulnerable in our society are almost always the victims of people with intemperance and, and anger issues. Look, if anything, think of the stoicism. Think of, uh, uh, think of the people who were looking at what they couldn't change, many of the circumstances in our life. So they said, I can't change the problems out here, but I can change how I choose to perceive them. I'm going to look for those people in our society and give them acknowledgement because they're dealing with a crisis without themselves becoming the crisis. They're dealing with stress without becoming the stress. 
They're dealing with toxic environments without becoming toxic emotionally, physically. And I believe that there is something to be learned from quiet introspection, meditation, listening to soft music, prayer, uh, uh, reading wonderful books of inspiration, Thoreau, Walt Whitman, Leaves of Grass, uh, Remy, the great poet, uh, the, the different people have inspired us throughout our lives, uh, throughout history, Maimonides, Montaigne. So take the time not to read junk, junk food for the brain or a lot of these cheap novels. Instead, read things that can inspire us throughout, throughout our crisis. Then watch videos. Bruce Lipton is phenomenal. Uh, Wayne Dyer is good. Deepak Chopra is good. Uh, I have a lot of motivational videos, uh, like Overcoming the Dark Side, and Happiness, and Love, and uh, Anger Taming the Beast Within, and Overcoming Fears. So I've done about a hundred. So there are a lot of good motivation, motivational videos to watch. But watch those instead of negative toxic news that doesn't do their homework, that are very biased from left and right. And then, then Keep a diary of how you're gaining strength by your being able to be in a solitude environment, but you're also not lonely because you're connecting with the inner being. You're connecting with the joy of your childlike behavior when you were a child where you couldn't wait to wake up in the morning and go outside and go, wow, what are all the neat things out here for me to do today? All right, let's start realizing that there are a lot of neat things we can do. We don't have to be passive, we can be active, but in a positive way. Let's not displace our anger and frustration and sense of confinement on ourselves or others. Let's not let the silent ego tear us up inside or project it out in anger or hate towards others. Let's resolve this. We're going to resolve this. Americans are great of all backgrounds, nationalities, and cultures resolving problems when we face them. Historically, I said you're not going to see demonstrations in America against the war when we were fighting in, in other countries, like in Iraq or Afghanistan or Libya, where we shouldn't have been. None of these countries should we have been. But I said, you won't see Americans protesting those because we're not in enough pain. Well, guess what? This crisis has allowed us to see what creates enough pain for us to say enough. So have your health officials told you any of the things I've suggested? When you go outside, you should go outside. And you should walk, but keep 20 feet in front of someone or behind someone. Wear a mask. Wear yourself a, an N95 mask, all right? And I wear an ionizer also, but, uh, and in my home I have an air filter. Here every room has an air filter. And we're, we haven't been off the property in two months, right? We're totally in isolation here, and no one's sick. Everybody's vibrantly healthy, but wear a mask. Now what I do with a mask, every night, when I take it off, I take hydrogen peroxide and I squeeze it, you know, and I, I soak it on both sides. That disinfects it. Then after that, when I wake up in the morning, I go to put it on again, I spray alcohol, 100% alcohol. That kills every virus and bacteria there is. And that way, I've been using this for a while, and it's fine, all right? It, it's, it's good, because when you're outside, the wind is blowing. Like right now, we have a, you know, we have a lot of wind going on here and it's blowing everything that you breathe out. And particles from the uh, person speaking don't go more than about, oh, three to five, six feet. That's why we had this six feet barrier, but I believe in 20 feet. But think of all the places you can go. If you go out early, you can go to the parks around you. You can walk up and down your block. Just go up in your backyard if you have a backyard, and a lot of Americans have a backyard, and start growing some aromatic plants. Start growing lavender, lilac, jasmine, honeysuckle, roses. And by the way, these have grown from the time they were planted little things. This is a year and a half. That's it because they've been fed rich uh, fertilizers, natural fertilizers. So grow a little garden. Make a little pond, a koi pond. Put fish in there. Put a little netting over it. Have a bench in front of it so you can sit there and read, listen to music, meditate, be mindful and then build your immune system because de-stressing builds the immune system, brings down cortisol, the stress hormone, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and you feel more relaxed, you feel at ease, you feel at peace. Breathe deep, 
breathe this wonderful clean air in from your backyard. If you have a roof that you live in an apartment building, go up and sun in the roof. Do exercises, do stretching, do aerobics. Put on one of the yoga uh, the one on the YouTube. You've got all these exercises you can do at home, even if with no machinery. There's even, I saw, there's an exercise you can do with a chair. You can do yoga exercises with a chair. So if let's say you have some physical limitation, use a chair. You're stretching the body, you're helping. So there's a lot you can do. Keep it positive. Make, a, make four gallons of juice one day, freeze it, and then put it in single day containers. Like I'm drinking a lot of juice every day, so I would freeze a bunch, and then each night I would put what I'm gonna drink the next day in the refrigerator. You can make a bunch of salads, different types of salads. Press out the air, zip it, and then put it in the refrigerator. Now you've got five days worth of salads. You can make a big pot of grains like millet, uh, quinoa, brown rice, uh, and then put it in the refrigerator, cover it in cellophane. The same thing with beans. You can make different types of beans and make your sauces. So then you just have to heat something up. No hassle at all. Be creative, don't be afraid. Try something new that you haven't tried. Stay away from meats, dairy, the things that can depress the immune system. Eat the things that are known to build the immune system. Now, mind you, you can Google pomegranates, and it shows you why they help repair the arteries of your body and they improve blood flow to your brain and your heart and your legs, your extremities. So you start using pomegranate. Now use beets because beets are really healthy. In fact, the beet is only second to rhubarb that most people don't eat, but they could. You can make some rhubarb, uh, or you can uh, cook rhubarb, but you can also make beets and you can cook the beets and peel them and then dice them up, slice them up, or shred them up and put them with olive oil, some mustard, and some apple cider vinegar, stir it around and let them marinate overnight. They're prebiotics. Take your probiotics every day. I'm suggesting now 50 to 100 billion per day. That's two tablets. Eating sauerkraut gives you that. Eating tempeh and tofu and miso gives you that. So take in healthy salads. Use seaweed salads. So that gives you a whole lot of minerals from the ocean, like iodine. And so you're getting outside, you're getting sunlight, you're taking your vitamins, you're eating a healthy plant-based diet, you're juicing, you're cleansing, detoxing, you're having high fiber, you're watching motivational films on television, you're watching, you're reading things that can empower you. Let's, let's learn from the Stoics. Let's learn, from, let's learn from people who say, I can't change the world, but I can change how I'm going to perceive it. And I'm choosing not to get stressed out. I'm going to perceive this as, wow, how often do you have a chance to be at home without all the responsibility you have getting to work and being at work? So this is going to be temporary, another week or another month, depending upon where you live. And the summertime in particular, you're going to see people's immune systems healthy because they're outside. They're de-stressing, they're playing, all right? And if you have a chance, then get to a botanical garden, wherever you live, and just sit and enjoy it. Keep your space from people. Again, I'm suggesting 20 feet. Now that's not always possible, but if you have a mask and you're 20 feet, there's no way in the world you're gonna get, in my opinion, you're gonna get infected with anything. But remember, at the end of the day, the best medicine you have is your body. Your body's really neat with the different immune systems going on that will target and identify pathogenic bacteria and pathogenic viruses because a lot of viruses are not pathogenic and the majority of bacteria are not pathogenic. You have 10 times more bacteria in your body than you have cells. You could have from 30 to 100 trillion cells. Imagine having 10 times more of that bacteria. Your face has bacteria, your mouth has bacteria, your, your skin has bacteria, your intestines have bacteria. Eat clean, healthy food and you Feed that good bacteria. Eat sugars, refined carbohydrates, hot dogs, hamburgers, french fries, pretzels, pizzas, potato chips, and buns, and you fed the bad bacteria. All right? Now, I'm hopeful that they will come up with a healthy medicine, one that kills the virus and doesn't kill people. If they come up with a good vaccine that has been proven by a randomized double blind placebo controlled study using a real saline solution against the vaccine they want, and not a dummy. Uh, the dummy placebos are another vaccine, and that's fraudulent. Or using aluminum in a, a vaccine that's supposed to be 
a placebo. It's not. Aluminum is extremely neurotoxic. And then if they come up with a vaccine that doesn't kill people, injure people, have adverse side effects, but kills the virus, I support it. If not, then I don't. But I don't support healthy people staying home by mandate, a man being arrested at the beach on an empty beach when no one was there for sitting and reading a book. Come on. Come on. Did they forget what's called the Constitution and Bill of Rights? Let us remember that we're still people who can make decisions. Let's not let the authorities tell us that, that, that what we should do and just accept it without intelligent challenge. Look for the facts. That's what we do here. We look for the facts of how to help the aging body de-age. Slow it down and wherever possible reverse the aging body. We've had people here who've overcome depression, overcome diabetes. They've dropped 100 points in their blood sugar. They're on no medications. They're doing phenomenal. So this is the second part of our study. The first part was six months ago. This is the confirmatory to make sure the first part wasn't a fluke when we got all these great results. And thus far, with only a, two weeks to go, we're seeing phenomenal results. I'm so excited by this. In fact, one person, uh, one of the leading anti-aging doctor, MD, PhDs in the country, called me after he read the first report and he said, Gary, if you can do this again, then you will have done what Bannister did when he broke the four minute mile. You will set a new paradigm of how we should age. And the diseases we now call normal for aging indeed are not normal for aging, they're normal for our lifestyle. So we could save hundreds of millions, if not billions of people suffering heart disease, dementia, cancers, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, you know, stroke. We could prevent that. That's why I'm here.